What's up, clubbers? GM, GM, GM. In today's video, what we are going to learn is something called ERC20 permit. Now, what does that mean? It is a mechanism through which you can just sign a message and then allow somebody else to approve spending on your behalf your ERC20 tokens. In order for somebody to spend your tokens, you need to let the smart contract know that you are approving this spender with this much value. Now, of course, that requires gas. And when interacting with a smart contract, it ends up spending two transactions, one for the approval, second for actually making the transaction. So there's a clever way with which you can sign a message, send that message via relayer and smart contract will understand that you want to give allowance to a spender. It has not finalized in EIP, but there is a draft which has been going on for long and it is already implemented in Open Zeppelin. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you want to send me a message, please leave it in the YouTube comments. And if you have a specific question, come join my Discord server. There are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. All right, with that said, let's get started. So the whole thing right kind of relies on this EIP called EIP 2612 permit. This specific EIP also relies on two major EIPs called ERC20 and ERC712. ERC20 is the EIP or the standard with which you generate tokens, your fungible tokens, your regular fungible tokens. EIP712 is a standard with which we sign typed messages. So when signing that message, we send in the type of the object and the object itself. EIP 712 is generally used in lazy minting. It is also used by OpenSea for getting your approval to, to sell your token and a bunch of other different things. Uh, but today what we're going to you do is use EIP 712 signature to let the smart contract know that this user wants to allow a specific sender to spend their tokens. Now you can of course uh, go through this EIP 2612, it sort of explains how it works but the specification that we really need to understand are these three, uh, permit, nonces and domain separator. Permit is the function that you call, uh, anybody can call that function if they have the valid B, R and S. So permit accepts owner, spender, value and deadline and the values V, R and S. Now what are V, R and S? They are something that you figure out from the signature, the signature that you get for signing a message. So when we sign the ERC712 message, that message will have this data uh, and basically it will confirm whether this data is available or not. And if it is, and if the signature is valid only then, what we will do is call the approve function directly on behalf of the owner and allow spender to spend that much of value. Nonces are the nonce, uh, the number of times a permit signature has been used. This is there so that, you know, we don't uh, end up with replay attacks. And then domain separator is something with which, you know, we create that domain in EIP 712. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. I'll just walk you through it. But if you want to understand this deeply, uh, let me know in the YouTube comments. I'll, I'll create a specific video on EIP 712 and also you can go ahead and read about EIP 712. The main thing that I want to uh, take away from this uh, article is this part. This is the EIP 712 message that we want to sign. We want the user to sign and basically move forward with it. All right. So this is something that we'll keep in handy and later on use. Now, if I go to um, Open Zeppelin ERC 20, you know, wizard, uh, I can just put in all these details and there's this uh, check mark called permit which I can just click. Now what happens with this permit is it adds this ERC20 permit which uh, in the back end sort of uh, implements this thing for the solidity part. All right. So now I can open this in Remix. Now that this thing is open in Remix, uh, what I can do is just create a new function called mint and this function will take an address for receiver and u int 256 for value all right this function will be external and let's just say anybody can call this and when somebody calls this we simply mint the token i can just put the two value and the value value all right 
So in fact, I should just change receiver to two. So this is what uh, the contract will look like. I will just go ahead and compile this and I'm already getting an error because I forgot a semicolon. Great. Now this should compile without any problems. There you go. It has compiled without any problem and I can simply deploy it uh, in the remix VM. All right. So let me just select that and deploy it. So there you go, we have our ERC20 permit smart contract available right here. Now you can see there's this function called permit and it accepts owner, spender, value, deadline and VRS. Let me just increase the font so it is visible. All right, this is the VRNS and what I have is with my own address. Uh, so what I want to do first is give some tokens to my address let's say 10,000 or whatever number of tokens okay the transaction has succeeded and now I have these many tokens I've also uh, prepared this code with which you know you can just go ahead and start using uh, so first what you need is web3 I've also added web3 model just in case you want to try out with wallet connect and uh, wallet connect web3 provider also, uh, because we are doing this on the front end, we need this buffer module. All right. Now, once this module is present, what I'll do is I'll just write window.buffer equals buffer so that we have this module available on the window object. Uh, then there are a bunch of variables that I've uh, defined. So this variable called domain name, I've set the value to my token. Now, this is the same value that you will send in the ERC20 permit here. All right. Generally speaking, this is the same as the ERC20 name. The domain version is string one, just leave it at that. The chain ID is one because Remix assumes chain ID one. Ethereum also assumes chain ID one. But if you are sort of working on this on a different chain, make sure to put the correct chain ID. And then the contract address is the address uh, that I can simply copy from here and paste it, all right? So this is the contract address of the deployed contract. The, the next thing that I have is account, uh, which I've set to null because this is the value uh, which I will set once the user has logged in. Then there are a bunch of things uh, that you don't need to really necessarily worry about, just copy paste them. But what I am trying to do is basically go here and I'm going to trying to recreate this ERC712 structure. So the structure has types. Uh, which has the EIP 712 domain and then the values over there then it is it has permit and these uh, values basically the things that it accepts and then we have a primary type which is set to permit we have the domain which we you know fill in the values and we have the message uh, the message is of the type primary type and it will have these values owner and the value will be owner spender will be spender value will be value nonce is something that i will come to and deadline will be deadline so what i am trying to do is uh, later in the video i'm trying to recreate that structure as you can see over here all right so 712 domain is the domain type uh, which i have just shown here the domain type the domain uh, if you just look at over here the domain type this is what the domain type is this is exactly what i've written then the domain is exactly this which i have written over here domain name domain version contract address and chain id uh, this will be the domain name domain version chain id and contract address and then the message is something that we will generate in this video now the first method that we encounter is called connect which basically helps you to connect with a wallet uh, I'm going to skip over this method, but it will be available in the source code for you to sort of go through it. I've already covered a bunch of these things in my previous videos. So if you get stuck, just go and watch them. Then there's a method called split sig. Uh, so what happens is when we sign uh, via MetaMask or other wallets, we get a signature, a long signature. All right. We want to split that into R, S and V values. And this is how we do that. All right. Again, this is not something that you need to understand very well, but just understand, you know, why do we need and all those things. And then uh, we have this function called sign typed. So this sort of uh, sends the message to the wallet hey, that, hey, can you please sign this message? And this is a typed message. So make sure to show it in that way. Again, this is something that, you know, you can just directly use anywhere and it should honestly work and then there's a create permit and this is where the magic happens 
So in create permit, we accept a bunch of things. We accept the spender, the value, the nonce and the red line. Now spender is the person or contract we want to sort of spend our tokens. Value is the amount of tokens that we want to let them spend. Nonce is a value that we get from the smart contract. This is the number of times permit transaction has been called. So if I just go back and see over here, let me just copy my own address. There's a nonces function that I can just paste my own address and click and get the value zero. So the first time that I want the user to sign this, the nonce will be zero. Okay. Then the deadline, the deadline is the time after which this signed permit will not be valid. So if you want an unlimited deadline, just set it to, to the highest uh, UN256 value that you can. All right. Similarly, if you want unlimited value to spend, uh, just set this to the highest UN256 value that you can. After that, I create the permits type uh, and actually this is a little confusing. What I will do is there you are much better. So I have a, a variable called uh, permit with a capital P and this is defining the type. So the EIP712 uh, domain type that we had earlier defined. Similarly, we are defining the permit type. Then we are sending the values in data to sign as a string. Uh, so json.stringify, we have the type, domain type, 712 domain, the permit, uh, the permit we just set. The domain is the values that we had earlier defined. Now the primary type is the type of the primary message, the message that we send over here. It will be permit, so we put that as permit. And then message is the permit. This is the message. The message has owner, which is from here, spender, which I'm getting from there, also here, value, value, nonce, nonce, deadline, deadline. All right. So this is the data that the user needs to see and sign. All right. We want, we have to send this data to sign to the user, to the wallet, wallet will show it to the user, user will tap and sign it. All right. And then we have uh, the signature that we get using the sign typed method that I, that I had earlier discussed. And then once I have that signature, I will split it and then return it from this method. All right. So I've gone ahead and created a main function which first connects the user and then uh, creates the permit and then sort of it just lets us know, hey, this is what the permit looks like. And then we can just copy that and paste it in Remix. If this was not on Remix if, Remix, if this was on real chain, we would have just interacted with that contract by calling the, the values, the, the real values with these methods. We would just instantiate a contract object and then contract.methods.permit and then, you know, call those things. So now what I'm going to do is run a new HTTP server. And a lot of people have asked, uh, what do they do if they don't have Python? You can actually use any HTTP server. There's Apache as well. If you want to use that, there is a one provided by Node.js. Just run any server uh, because that is what we need for MetaMask to sort of work here. Once the server is up and running, uh, we go to localhost port 8000. And you can see that the whole uh, screen is empty because there's nothing in the UI that I've written, but I can just call this main function. When I do, it pops up. Uh, it asks me whether I want to connect MetaMask or Wallet Connect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead with MetaMask. And there you go. This is what it looks like. It has owner uh, as my own address, spender as the spender's address. And this spender address is the address that you can find over here. So this is uh, the address that I'm putting. Then there's value thousand, nonce, zero, and then deadline is some uh, value out in the future. I can now sign this and get it over with. So once I signed it, you can see that the values have come back. Okay, so we have R, S and V. One thing that you need to make sure is whatever the chain ID is, uh, you need to be connected to that chain ID network. Otherwise, this thing does not work. Otherwise, MetaMask gives you an error. Okay, now that I have these values, uh, let me just open Remix and open this permit uh, thing. Okay, so for permit, I have the spender as this address. Uh, by the way, this is something that should be exactly the same. So I just copy the spender address. The RSV will change if any of the values change or the nonce changes. So make sure that all of those things are same. So spender uh, is what I've already added. Uh, the value is 1000. 
the deadline is uh, this big number and my address is this okay now we are not putting nonce because nonce is something that the smart contract takes care of so uh, it is zero at this point so uh, that is why we have signed with the zero nonce if it was not zero uh, and we sign it with zero nonce the rsv values will be different and it will give us an error so now i can copy the r and paste it over here we can also copy the s and paste it over here and v is 28 so now if i click transact the transaction should go through remember the transaction that i'm making is from this account and what will be the result of that uh, the, the result will be uh, let me just copy the owner if i check the allowance right now of this owner for this specific spender the value is zero now if i click on transact for permit the transaction has gone through and i now check the value has changed to thousand so now what can happen is this this spender can spend uh, the tokens on behalf of this owner now instead of this spender being myself i could have made this a smart contract all right and to make all of this thing really smooth for the user uh, what i could have done is i could have taken the rsv values and all these others values given it to a relayer and that relayer would have made this call on my behalf and the next time uh, the user will just transact uh, the allowance for my smart contract would already be there also dexes like uh, uniswap i believe and one inch what they have done is they have incorporated erc20 permit so if a erc20 token follows that standard the users of that token don't need to provide uh, the approval in the first call what they need to do is just permit and once they're permitted they just click on swap and it works seamlessly and how does that happen what they have done is they've written their own smart contract which permits and transfers the tokens in the same call that smart contract would look something like uh, if they have this token as something like this so token dot permit and then they will send whatever values and after that it will be like token dot transfer from and then transfer the correct values from to whatever they want to do in one transaction itself and this is how they end up saving gas for their users as well and that is it i hope this video was helpful all the links are in the description down below uh, please make sure that you know you copy the things correctly some of the few errors that i found was that your might your domain name might be different than the thing that you're sending in the erc20 permit the domain version might not be a string the contract address might be wrong the chain id might be wrong anything that is different will be an error also uh, the nonce the for the first time is zero and the second time it will be one third time it will be two so let let's just see uh, the nonce is right now it says one so as the nonce is are one so the next permit thing that you want to do will have to be with nonce one and if you do it with nonce zero the smart contract will give you an error so there are a bunch of moving parts over here so first if everything went above your head just learn the erc20 tokens learn how the approvals work then learn what are eip712 and then come to this specific video if you liked watching this video please please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't i'm not getting any new subscribers anymore i don't know what happened maybe the content has gone to shit but whatever please let me know in the youtube comments if that is the case if you don't like the video if you like the video if you want me to pick a new video and if you have a specific question come join my discord group there are a bunch of people just like you and me who are trying to help each other out. I hope to see you again next week. Till then, bye-bye.